Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we return with our 1981 Buick Century, which is equipped with a 350 cubic inch diesel. This vehicle has sat abandoned in a shed for the last 12 years, and today we're going to be breaking out the pressure washers, soap, and hand mitts, and see if we can bring this thing back to life and get it back on the road. Let's begin. All right, let's wash this sucker. Unfortunately, we're missing a window, so I gotta be careful about this area. Let's figure out what color this car is. Our camera died. I don't know if we caught this or not, but I was pressure washing this and the Buick emblem blew off. <laughs> and there's a Pontiac logo behind it. Is that even the same car we drove here? As you can see, this is still really dirty, so we're gonna go ahead and get some soap and some mitts and get in here and break as much of this hard dirt as we can off. And then rinse it all down again. And then we'll be ready for some actual paint therapy, if you will. It's been done many, many times, as you can see here with the buffer. Yeah, 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 they burned the edge right here. Good call. All right, Mr. Mint, are you ready to wash this car? Yeah, man. I'm totally ready to wash this tour, man. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, basically, we're just going to do this for a half hour or more. And then we'll be back. We'll see you then. I'm 
terrified to know what's under here. This whole floor pan is just like a fishbowl. It just, whoo! I don't know if it's good or bad or what. There's a lot of mouse poop in here. I mean, like a lot. Gonna need a little extra something, something. There's glass everywhere in this car. It's just one window. Why? Dang! Ah. That actually looks really cool. Like, what? Wow! There's just uh, there's just lap belts in the back because it was 1981. So this is what you get. Holy hell! No. <laughs> and nomadic. That's freaking excellent. Pull it. Pull it. No. 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 There's what a little bit of D-germ does to her. How about this down here? Get the heavy stuff off. Give her a squirt. Give her a wipe. What about the green? Does it turn it back to blue? Look at that. Done. Yeah. This... Oh, is this supposed to be blue? Yes. Oh, that makes so much more sense. I'm gonna go with no, but... A little bit. I'm sure it turns it back to it doesn't have AIDS. Because this kills AIDS. Fun fact. All right, well, that's... Their next step once all the vacuum's done, I guess, and then the interior is totally detailed. I did one swipe on the dash. Holy crap, do another. Apparently, the dash isn't black, it's blue. Whoa! <laughs> but watch this here. It's just goo. Just goo. It's blue. I straight up thought that was all black. Look at that. That, that I, is black. I, I thought it was black too. Beautiful. Yeah, come look at this, this whole side. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's blue. Versus that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Morning, Angus. Morning. Your what? vacuum stopped. Yeah, oh, no, it I, was you. I turned it off. <laughs> oh. Welcome to day two of putting this 1981 Buick Century Limited back on the road. Uh, this has gone from, hey, let's clean the car to, hey, let's spend way too much money on it and totally make it a reliable daily driver for one of us. It wasn't my idea. We've gone down to O'Reilly's this morning and procured most of the stuff we're going to need for today. We've got a water pump coming later. Cool. We have oil, filter. Uh, we got sway bar links because yesterday we threw this thing up on a lift and looked under it and the sway bar links are snapped off. Um, anything that holds fluid doesn't want to hold the fluid anymore, so we got to figure out what all that is. Yes. We've got new rubber brake lines for the corners and the rear. One of them is like sheared in half, yet somehow operable. Beyond all that stuff to make this thing roadable, we're going to make it beautiful. I went down to the store and grabbed ourselves some Perfect It 360 60 medium glaze, some wax, some window cleaner and a wool pad. So I'm going to channel my dad here and try to make this car look at least halfway similar to the quality level of the Golden Oldsmobile with probably way more burnt lines because I barely know what I'm doing despite having grown up with a father who did bodywork professionally for like 20 or 30 years. But like this car is a really good candidate for it, learning on. It's the perfect practice car. If you guys ever want to learn auto body and practice buffing, 
do it on something that doesn't matter. Get your neighbor's grandma's car or something and offer to buff it out or find one in the woods or just go get go get a fender for 20 bucks from a junkyard you don't care about and practice on that and then just throw it away. It's gonna be a lot less stressful doing that, which is exactly my plans for the day. So, we'll go ahead and get the buffer, get the wool pad all set up and start digging into this while Angus finishes up the interior and we'll bring you guys along for the ride. All right, let's get some before shots of this paint here. As you can see, there's a lot of haze in the paint, a lot of uh, impurities and poop, a lot of poop ass in there. Here's a bunch of stuff in the rear panel, the C pillar here. So there we go, that is our before. Let's set to work and work towards an after. All right, so we got our buffer and our 3M rubbing compound ready to go. I uh, refreshed myself by watching the video with the 72 Oldsmobile where my dad buffed that car. Um, if you actually want to know how to do this properly for someone who's been doing it for 30 years, go check that video out. It's a really, really good video for learning some bodywork buffing on these old cars. Um, basically what I remember is take it slow, do a small spot at a time, go off of each edge, not into them, to avoid um, cutting the paint, which you can already see has already actually happened in this car. Someone just rolled the buffer right over this edge. This is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me. I haven't done this in years, so uh, let's go ahead and set to it. What the hell is this thing? So this is, I'm borrowing this from someone and it seems to have a uh, pressure control where if it bogs down, it speeds itself up. So I don't know how well this is gonna work. that's going fast I know it is going to take a bit of work to get all this off because it's uh, taking the immediate oxidization off and then clearly showing me that there's stuff under it that needs fixed look at that though it's gonna be a $9,000 car we're done it's classic right don't you think that's a bit much <laughs> One thing I'm suddenly remembering is dad said get a spray bottle full of water to keep your pad wet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Wow. There's a lot of haze in this paint. Like, oh my God. See that? Look at all that haze. Nope, there's no taking that out. That's all subsurface cracking. But we can see ourselves now, so we're moving in the right direction. Once again, don't yell at me in the comments because I am not a professional. I do not claim to know what the hell I'm doing right now. Really wish Dad was here this weekend. <laughs> all right, well, there's our first panel. A definite difference from the old to the new. Hell, you can see the haze from here. Uh, you can also see all the dents I found from here. <laughs> One thing I am noticing, I don't think this is actually all me. Um, I don't know if we'll pick it up on camera. So if you watch the center of your screen right now, that is dark blue, light, darker, lighter, darker, lighter. Those are stripes in the paint. And the difference is um, the haze is either absent, such as right there in the center of the screen, 
versus here where it's really, really thick. So I don't think that's actually my fault. I think that was in the paint prior. And as my dad said a hundred times, you can only make it as good as what's there. All right, so we're back under the hood. Uh, we've got a couple things to take care of. One, we got a new set of batteries for this car that can be dedicated to this car and we don't have to use these revival batteries anymore. And the second thing we'll do while we're under here is we need to replace our water pump. While we were driving this thing around town, we noticed that it had a squeal as you increased engine RPM. We determined that it wasn't anything belt related as far as alternator power steering or air conditioning compressor. And when we took a temp reader all over the engine, we took a reading on this pulley, it read about 100 degrees higher than everywhere else on the engine, which told us that the forward bearing on the water pump was bad. So to remedy that, we're just replacing the whole thing. Besides yeah. that, it was literally screaming. Yeah, it was absolutely screaming. We, we started driving around yesterday and it just went like, and we we're like, oh, I think something's wrong. Yep, so that's what I'll be doing under the hood. I think, Jesse, you're gonna continue cleaning a little bit on the inside while Kevin's buffing, and we're gonna just tag team this thing. So. Let's do it! Let's do it! I don't know what I'm doing still. <laughs> Got the last bolt out, which was kind of a nightmare, of the water pump. Couldn't get the uh, lower rad hose off just yet, so I'm gonna twist that off right now and make a massive mess, I bet. Maybe. Yeah, it's just... Cool, well that's out. And for those of you who are watching live, the reason we are replacing, we are replacing this water pump is because the front bearing squeals like a stuck pig. It's so bad. So we're just gonna throw a new one in there, be done with it. And for those of you who are not watching live, you should definitely subscribe to watch live next time right here on Junker Biggs. It ain't common, but when it is, it's a good old time. Why are you licking the water pump? John gets to lick oil. I want to lick something. Calamity resumes. Angus has our water pump off. Uh, we have a whole crew working on this car now. Caleb, my cousin's son, is over here. Ben, my cousin, is here. They are currently replacing the um, blower motor that we saw that was uh, not good earlier, for lack of better words. Angus has our new water pump. He looks confused. Everything's going pretty well. What? Did you already open this? No. Is it like covered in goo? Yes! What? Look. This has already been gooed. It's already been gasketed. This is a return unit that someone covered in RTV and then took back to AutoZone. Uh-oh. What, 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 what is this RTV? Is or is it this? Not. It's that. It's that like over-the-counter over the stuff. They put on it. Sorry, you? internet. Jabez. Well, I guess we'll just... Cut all that off and right do it size. correct. So we've got most of our interior here done, as you can see, but just to give you guys a little example of how muddy this is, we've got nice clean rag. Just wipe off the steering wheel. Holy shit. It's, everything has been just covered by this goo. And it's so sticky. So far we've had to scrub it out of every single tight corner and nook and cranny, but as you look across the whole dash, it is nice and clean. Set the rust on the thing. What a beautiful car. Okay, that might be pushing it. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we went ahead, got the old gasket scraped off of our new water pump. And <laughs> if you can tell that I'm maybe a little salty about it, I am. Got the old gasket scraped off thanks to our wonderful helper here, Caleb. And uh, went ahead, RTV'd the new gasket. Tried to drop some bolts, and she's ready to go back on. So, you'll never guess what happens next. The water pump goes on? Yeah, I cry a little bit. And the water pump goes on, yes. Oh, well, I only guessed half of it, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Do you have enough RTV for all that rusty surface? Gosh, I hope so. We can put more on, maybe. <laughs> you don't have to call me names. <laughs> there it is. Got a new water pump in. Throwing the shrouds in right now. Should be wrapping this up, nothing too crazy. And then we'll uh, top everything off and hit the key and see if it blows coolant cool everywhere. Clear. Everyone clear? Sure. All right, roll plugs. One, two, three, four, ten. Maybe show us a little more than ten, okay. When the wire gets hot, I think that's when it's good to go.
take it that didn't fix it. What the shit? What the hell is that squeaking noise? Is it, is it the alternator drawn? We could pop the alternator belt off and find out if it's the alternator bearing. Yeah. Can we do that quick? Uh, quick is a relative term. For the internet out there, it'll be really quick. For us, eh, not so quick. We'll be back when it's quick. Okay, alternator belt is off. We're gonna see if it still screams. Ready? Yep, ready. <laughs> you gotta hold it, but not burn your hand. It's kind of like a weird game of operator, but with way worse consequences. <laughs> Nothing. It was the goddamn GM alternator once again. Get out of the way! It's me, a dying camel. <laughs> Let me just hold it for a long time. I should have clear out. <laughs> Diesels don't have loud horns because you already know they're coming. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it kind of sounds like the engine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, here, let me start my car. <laughs> you can't tell. There's no difference. Like it. Yeah, no, your alternator is definitely squeaky. Okay. Yeah. One more time. Hey, Moot. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. Day two, bringing the paint back to life on the Buick. Uh, Angus is still turning wrenches under the hood. We're putting a new thermostat in it because that hood right there took a poop yesterday and replaced that. You gotta take the thermostat housing off. And if we're taking the thermostat housing off, might as well put a new thermostat in. Yep. Anywho. <laughs> why, why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we restoring an 81 Buick Century diesel? <laughs> what have we come to at this point? I've been saying that this whole time. I've asked you that at least five times. <laughs> this is dumb. I hate this motor. The car is nice. I like this car. It's gonna be great. Heck, Good. you guys. Wow, those non uh, horizontal surfaces come out really nice. That's beautiful. Hey, Angus. Yo. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Shia LaBeoufer. I'm gonna go through and do everything above my pinstripe tape right now, and then move my tape and do everything below. New air filter. New air filter. Wow. Let our little diesel breathe. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're joining us in the uh, driver's quarter panel here. I have done some actual, like, real true buffing to try to get these scratches out of here. And they came out pretty well. Uh, they're still visible because they're beyond the surface of the paint. But there's still this dent here. And we're curious if we can do some PDR, some paintless dent repair. Uh, with our uh, specialized uh, auto body whacker. So, uh, Mr. Whacker, <laughs> would you like to do some PDR to this panel, please? I've always wanted to punch this car. I'm ready. I'm ready not. Oh, <laughs> it's fixed! <laughs> There's one up a little higher and one below it, so you might have to punch out. That's but... the whacker touch, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this one's on a body line, so I think we might have to massage these out. I'll get the, uh, the massageable hammer. I'm telling your dad on you. <laughs> Actually though, there's still a little crease because the metal's been folded, but that's pretty good. I'm okay with that for a little time, just whackering around. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, made a casualty, but... 
Nothing a little glue can't fix, right? Crimes, you know. <laughs> it's, the, it's the turn of the century. <laughs> You're really proud of yourself, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> that took me a century to think of that, okay? <laughs> Leave me alone. Somebody help me. You know, you, you stand around, living life, and the next thing you know, uh -oh. a century flies by. Time flies. Oh no. What you doing, Angus? Dropping oil filters. Both literally and metaphorically. But mostly literally. That'll buff. All right, finishing up the oil change on this piece of junk. Uh, <laughs> Just such hatred. I hate it. I hate it so much. And the more uh, you like it, the more I hate it. Oh, I love it. It's just such a good car. I hate it. It might be my favorite car. It might be our best car, Mook. The Wildcat is listening. It can hear you. Well, we're throwing some 1540 in of the cheapest variety. It already looks dirty. <laughs> Like, Hi, welcome to Diesel. Like, what the hell? Uh, anyway, I'm taking off the alternator right now. We've got one coming on Monday, which is tomorrow, if my math is correct. We'll get a little bit of, of me doing the, the... Oh no, he's going to get called unoriginal and say he's caught in the strip garage because he whistled. No, that's totally true. Watched a couple of his videos and then I just started doing it and I hate it. Really doesn't convey the message I'm trying to uh, get across. All right, we got one spinny sculternator. Sounds like a tiny little bird. Look for any spots I may have missed, do a little bit of handwork around the mirrors, doors, emblems, blah, blah, blah. And then roll this outside and wash the whole thing. And then we'll have the shiniest turd in the toilet. Yeah, it's so weird to like work on this for like a whole day buffing it and cleaning it and being like, oh, we're here working on a car. And then you fire it off and it sounds like a dump truck. It messes with your brain a little bit. I'll tell you what, this is one beautiful color though. Should have brought my bikini. No, that's fine. <laughs> Probably gathered by now. It is time to wax this car. What are you talking about? It's time to go to bed. Well, yeah, there's that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is. Thin. You weren't ready for that, were you? I was not. That is that is quite thin. I'm not ready for Angus and ice cream. Yeah, Angus and sugar <laughs> and food and whatever the hell's going on is a wild ride that I. I just started. Son of a gun. <laughs> so that should be enough for the trunk in entirety. I can 
far more satisfying than buffing, just saying. Yeah, so basically I'm gonna keep doing this for another hour and we'll be back when it's done. I know I missed a smile! What are you looking at, buffer boy? <laughs> Alright. This is the last panel. The car's actually coming out pretty good. Uh, for as much as it fought me in the beginning, it's coming out way, way better than I had anticipated. So I am pleasantly surprised. Bonk. Yeah, so as you can see, all that haze is still in there. There's uh, a lot of cracks right here. This might actually be a bit of plastic work. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks like there's almost sanding marks. I think this car may have been repainted. I don't know. Good morning, sir. Morning. It is day three with our Buick Century Dursal. Um, we're gonna yank the tires off right now because we have new tires. There is an alternator waiting for us at O'Reilly's. I think the only thing we have left here to do is uh, the rubber brake lines and then bleed the brakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe those upper control arm bushings. We'll see how much of a nightmare that is. Well, it's a good thing we have this lift to do such a thing on. Yeah. It's much nicer. <laughs> This bent pack, two post, 10,000 pound lift. Thank you again, bent pack. You beautiful bastards. Rise, you blue turd. All right, let's get these tires off and go get some new treads. Oops. Where are the other drugs going? Talk. What? Our frame's actually good through here. This is usually where these cars rust out and this one's good to go. So, interesting. Shocks look to be, well, they still got paint on them, so they're fine. They're cylindrical. Yep, still has paint, still round. Check and check, we're good to go, let's hit the road. All right, so this is what we're gonna be replacing. This rubber line right here, as you can see, has seen better days, and that is a safety hazard. Now, when we bought the car, the guy said the transmission leaked and that's why he parked it. Uh, so far, the transmission's been the only thing that doesn't leak. Although we did have to put a few quarts in it, so yeah, I don't, I don't like it's wet, but I don't see any specific thing that goes bad. We also haven't let it sit for longer than maybe 48 hours in the same spot. But it hasn't put a drop on the floor. Like oh, yeah. usually, when this seal goes bad, it drops like three quarts. While we're in here, we also realized that this right here is the uh, sway bar link, so that's probably part of our body roll issue. I got a couple, a couple of those coming. To replace both of these, because sure enough we replaced that one and then this one explodes. And then these up here are the upper bushings I had mentioned. Which as you can see are, well you can't see them. Because they're not there anymore. Those uh, those upper joints definitely need to replace, so we're just going to burn off our brand new set of tires. And that's throwing money away, which I don't like to do. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pop the um, remaining sway bar link off here. The fastest way to do this is not with a wrench, if you have one. It can be possible, most of the time they'll snap off, which is actually quick, uh, you're lucky in that case. But a lot of times this stuff is so rusted that they'll just strip out or spin, and it's a nightmare. So just go straight for the cutting tools and get these out of the way. I think I even managed to not hit the brand new brake line. Hindsight should have done this first, but we, uh, we survived. With that being said, we have all of our new rubber brake lines in. Those are nice and dependable now. Let's go ahead and drop this thing down to where we can reach the suspension and pull out the upper control arms, ball joints, get all those new bushings in and realign this thing. down to Triples, our favorite tire store in the world. If you're in Ames, Nevada, Central Iowa, Iowa at all, and need car work done, 
Trickles Automotive, Ames, Iowa, the place to go. Here you go, I guess. Oh, oh you're not there. Oh. Ding, 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 got it. <laughs> Once again, here's our new tires put on by Trickle Automotive in downtown Ames. I'm going to throw the rears on this car before we start working on the front suspension because we know we're going to need to load up the front lower control arms to compress the springs so it doesn't explode in our freaking face. So we didn't want to put too much loading on the rear of our two post lift otherwise it might just go and topple over on the car. So we're going to zip these on right quick and move to the front. Yeah, I always knew one of these leads, if you grounded it out, it would, it would zap, but it didn't do it when I took it off, so I was like, hmm, maybe that was my imagination. Fuck! Ah, I'm still doing it! <laughs> Why is that on fire? All right, I've got our ball joint busted loose out of our uh, spindle here. Everything looks okay, or at least to the point you would expect from a 136,000 mile car from 1981. Uh, I'm going to push this guy all the way up so they can get to these two, the impact. Uh, buzz those off. I'm going to take careful inventory of what uh, spacers are there for our alignment so I can put everything back and hopefully everything just lands the way it's supposed to. Probably won't, but I can dream. All right, checking in a couple hours later, we have our ball joint press set up to press all these uh, cups and rubbers and studs out and what else and whatnot. Uh, I've got one done already. It's a pain in the ass. A hydraulic press would probably be pretty nice, but if you're inventive enough, you can get it done without one. Exhibit A. And then from there, I'll just pound that out, throw our new ones in, put the new ball joint in, and we'll be good to go. All right, there we go. I uh, put the camera down so that I get this done and hopefully finish this car tonight because tomorrow we're pulling a uh, vehicle mooks in and starting a revival on that. So I need to get this sucker out of here tonight. But long story short, we have new upper ball joints and new upper control arm bushings in the front of the car on both sides. At this point, I'm simply going to take these wheel bearings, uh, clean them out, re-grease them, repack the spindles and everything full of grease, put it all back together, slap the front tires on it, and move on to whatever the hell we find next. Actually, you know what? This is a good time to address something. Um, revival cars being put back on the road. We tried to do a video of that with Angus's truck, just kind of showing you what there is to put stuff back on the road. In the end, that video made it look really easy, and actually for that vehicle, it was. And this one, honestly, kind of the same story. Not a lot of work goes into putting some of these cars back on the road. At the same time, other vehicles take a ton of work. It's all very vehicle specific. So if you're wondering, how do you do your own revival and how do you put your own vehicle back on the road, it is all very vehicle specific. Just have a general basis knowledge of what needs to be done to make it reliable and grab yourself a flashlight, crawl around, search through the vehicle and see what is wrong. And then if it's wrong, fix it. Exhibit A, these bushings. Now I know this car is going to be good for another probably 100,000 miles before it needs those. It's not going to last that long, but in the weird chance it does, it'd be okay. And it's one less thing for me to worry about out there on the road. And you're not going to find everything. Some stuff will remain hidden from you and you'll never know. And then you'll probably find out at the worst possible time and break down out on the road somewhere. And that's, that's just part of it. But for the most part, when you're digging around working on one thing, inspect everything in the area, clean up everything in the area, and leave whatever area you're working in better than you found it. During that kind of general cleaning inspection is when you're going to find what's wrong with your vehicle. You're going to see stuff you haven't seen before. You're going to notice stuff that's starting to go out that you haven't been able to feel in the wheel or notice a noise or a vibration about yet. When something's wrong, get into an area, clean it, inspect it, take note of what needs to be fixed in the immediate or near future, and then move on to the next thing. And that is how you put old cars back on the road. You just keep wrenching and 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 wrenching. wrenching. Angus is throwing our caliper back on this side. We got our bleeders loose. We had to take them off and drill them out and get them to move fluid again. We're going to throw those calipers on, and then I'm going to throw the sway bar links in, put the front tires on, and we're done.
Well, that's that. That is our front suspension totally redone. We got ourselves some new sway bar links, new uh, upper control arm bushings, new upper ball joints, new grease in the... What is going on? I think there's like debris inside the hubcap. <laughs> there's new stuff. I'm tired. I don't know. That would be everything, but unfortunately, I gorilla armed this freaking bleeder right off on this side before we put any heat into it. I was like, oh, it's moving, and it just snapped in half. And then the easy out snapped off inside of it, so pretty much just sad times over here. Gonna go down to O'Reilly's, get ourselves a new caliper tomorrow. They're 22 bucks, might as well. Heck it. Day four? Four and a half if you count our overtime. Yeah, yesterday was a long day, but today our hood struts came in so we can get rid of our rather uh, nice wheelbarrow handle, actually. Might, might miss this. It was pretty... I don't know. It's got termites in the end. I don't oh, know. Okay, that's, that's fair. We'll throw They're it not out. the best road trip buddies. <laughs> I have ourselves a new caliper. I'm going to throw that on quick. We'll bleed our brakes, throw the tires on, and then we should be good to go for a little cruise and figure out whatever we forgot. Oh, a window! We need a window! <laughs> Well, so let's get her back together and finish this up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Ooh, ooh, fluid everywhere. All right, there we go. Brakes are bled. Everything seems to be working. Let's put these tires on and get this thing moving around again. Here we go. Them in the hood. I mean, the only thing left at this point is the power steering pump. Did that, that didn't run off the alternator belt, did it? No. Because we took the alternator belt off and the squeak went away. Maybe your new alternator's bad. <laughs> I hate you and I hate that horn and I hate this car. Alright, let's clean up the shop a bit uh, and then. We'll be back to this car in a couple days to figure out what the hell is screaming under the hood. All right, we're back. Hopefully the final day here. Got a few things to wrap up. We have the window to put in there. I have the power steering belt. And then we're maybe gonna do a quick alignment and this thing should be good to go. Joining me today is my father. If you don't know him, this is my dad, obviously, and he was a bodyman for 30 years and was the guy who got me into cars. So he is gonna go ahead and probably take about eight seconds to look at this car and find anything I did wrong or tell me the history of the car that I could not pick up on. All right, what do you see? You bought a diesel. No. Yeah, well, that was my first mistake, yeah. I don't know, I'd say that a lot of the car has been repainted sometime in its, in its life. Do you think all at once or a panel at a time or? No, I think all at once. I think they painted the whole car. Because you see a lot of, uh, if you look across the roof, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but you can see a lot of DA. Um, we had words for that, but I can't say that on the internet. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, there's a lot of deformation, but you know what? It's a pretty darn nice shape for an 81. Any other clues or things that you can point out and teach people to I find would... to see if a car's been repainted? Here at the trim, instead of removing all this trim, I can actually pick it off. It is paint. Um, I did notice that here where it was blatantly obvious. I was able to pick up on that. Here is a crack, but this isn't nothing they did. This is actually, you gotta go back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. This is actually put in with lead. 
And when it starts cracking here, it's a good chance this was a southern car at one time. It's that, you know, intense heat. How's the interior? Is it faded pretty bad? Or? No, it's actually really good. Right, so. I know it's been up here since 01-ish, 2000. It's a nice car. Oh, there's some plastic in the hood, yeah. Is there? I did notice that cracking. Yeah, they're same kind of deformations on the hood as the roof line. But. And the hood's hazed, but nothing else is. Yeah. So yeah, Dad's here today to help me put a window in this door. Uh, being a body man, it's going to go a lot easier for him to do it and show me what's going on and show you guys some tips and tricks. I haven't put very many windows in cars, honestly. I just avoid body work, and I've been pretty fortunate with glass in my life. Except for the stint in high school where I drove Ford Rangers, and for whatever reason, our lawnmower hated Ford Rangers, and I put four windows in in like three years. <laughs> I'm gonna go to uh, Brian G Body Garage's YouTube channel. You can check this guy out on YouTube and Instagram. He has got a ton of these cars, and I'm gonna watch exactly how he gets this door panel off so we don't screw this up. Okay, well that's a cat. Once we watched the video, we figured out which way which pieces needed to slide, got all the necessary screws out, and popped the door cards off in no time at all. We then got the vacuum out and cleaned all the broken glass out of the bottom of the door. We then started fiddling with the window mechanisms to figure out how to get the old rail out and get our new glass in. I could go into detail on this, but we're short on time, and the chance that any of you guys have an 81 Buick Century with a broken window is probably pretty low. Long story short, every car is going to be wildly different. Uh, there's plenty of stuff on the internet you guys can look up to find how to do this on your vehicle. And I have to say I was surprised it wasn't terribly hard. We had to be a little ingenuitive to figure everything out, but in the end it all came together and our car had a window again. There it is. We have ourselves a replaced window and everything seems to function just fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the power steering pump belt. Alright, we got our old belt out. This thing is nice and shiny as you can see there. That means she's definitely been screaming on us, burning up the edges here. Uh, we got our new belt, which is actually a V-belt with teeth on it. So we're going to put that in. That should fix up our squeal. And then move on to the next step for taking this thing on a little road trip. All right. New power steering belt is on. Taught us another lesson. And make sure you actually truly go through the effort to diagnose stuff before just loading the parts cannon and letting it rip. Exhibit A and Exhibit B. But those aren't really a waste of time and money because those are nice things to have changed. One of our last steps back here is we have a tail light out. Um, I believe, can you pull the lights, Dad? Yeah, we just got one bulb out there. Other than that, everything works. Well, bulb was just bad. Found one in my toolbox, and we're good to go. Well, I'd say that right there is as shiny as you can make a turd. What do you say, Mook? Yeah. Go for a little cruise around town, see if it even makes it. This would be off. Pulling the car faster than I can keep it together. It's beginning to show its true GM diesel colors and just turn into a pile of shit faster than I can get it out of the shop. It's pissing cooling all over the place. Probably leaking power steering fluid and something is screaming in this belt assembly. Oh, and it is burning hot again. What the frick? What's hot? The pulley. All right, so, so much for that test drive. Took our radiator hose off. Found a big old crack right here. So we're gonna have to get a new radiator. We, we could have that brazed, but looking at the rest of it and remembering that it was half full when we got there, 
It is. Yeah, you can see all the blue over there. It's well and hecked up, so that radiator is going to need replaced, which might be a fun time because it's special. Because of this guy right here, it's a cooler on the front, and then there's this huge transmission cooler. I don't know. That's that's probably going to be a nightmare to find. Likewise, the uh, fuel pump failed, which I knew would eventually happen because anytime you get an old diaphragm pump to come back to life and start moving fuel, it will usually move fuel for a little bit and then they will fail. So replace your fuel pumps on revivals. Uh, but yeah, it's dripping on the ground, leaving some fuel down there, so that's bad. Bad radiator, bad fuel pump, something is still screaming on that center pulley. So I don't know if those are wobbling inside of each other or what the hell is going on. But I'm about to take all this apart and figure it out. Mook! What? What day is it? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I have no idea. <laughs> We're back with the Buick. We just took a one week hiatus to uh, work on what had been previously sitting here and is now sitting out there. We got invited to an open house down in Des Moines and thought, well, we got to take something cool. So we took a one week break to absolutely thrash the 68 Gambler Le Mans together. And we did it and we made it all the way to Des Moines. So keep an eye out for that video next week. Either way, we're back with the Buick. New radiator is sitting here ready to go. Never did get a fuel pump ordered. I had one ordered. They're all out of stock across the whole country, so that sucks. And the one I did order, they refunded me, so. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, this will be here a couple days late. And then it goes, you've been refunded. And I'm like, okay, excellent. So yeah, these are pain in the ass to find a fuel pump for. Yeah, without further ado, let's wrap this damn project up, get this radiator in there. Uh, I'm gonna shot blast that stupid pulley, and we're gonna replace the one remaining belt that hasn't been replaced and see if it stops screaming for its own death. Well, it's been all of like a day and a half now. Nothing's really changed. Uh, I have had to fight this radiator. What was originally right here for the transmission cooler on the front of the radiator was a 1 8 uh, national pipe thread male into a inverted flare 3 8 out to a hard line. Uh, but this radiator wants inverted flare, th sorry, 5 16 Inverted flare 5 16 for both. And I need a 90 because they're right next to that, the AC condenser. They don't make that. So I had to drill and tap 5 16 like inverted flare fittings. Don't know if that's gonna work, but it'll work for now. Yeah. I also had to bash some things in to clear this radiator because it's bigger. So yeah, if you guys need a radiator for your Buick diesel, don't get the one off Rock Auto because it does not fit without some modification to the car. And about two days of busting your knuckles and looking at every store in town for fittings. The good news is in the meantime, my fuel pump showed up, which I didn't think I had ordered because I didn't think I could find them. But there's one here now. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and change that fuel pump and then get everything back together. Finally, maybe. All right, so there it is, our radiator's in. I've got some soft lines ran from those crazy fitting things I made to the unions with bar fittings. Um, our overflow is hooked up, bottom radiator hose is on. I gotta get all the accessories put back on before the top one can go in. I took the pulley down to my buddy Phoenix's and we sandblasted it quick, so that should reset the surfaces for the belts so that they will have a chance to um, hopefully not scream and howl under use. We'll see. All right, there it is. Our new radiator is finally in this damn thing. All the hoses are hooked up. We got some fluid in it. Doesn't seem to be leaking at all for once. That's a nice change of pace. We'll see if that belt still screams like hell. Of course, since we put a new fuel pump on this vehicle, we need to reprime the injection system. Uh, I've gone ahead and unplugged power to the injection pump, so it should not move fuel past the pump. And then I've taken the inlet for the fuel filter off so that the mechanical pump on the side of the block, which is driven by engine rotation, will be able to prime and pump to that point. And then if there's any air, it'll be about meh, that much in the filter. So in theory, this should work. And then we'll get it to fire and just open her up and get some RPM in it so that if there is any air, it'll just rip through the injectors before the motor wings down to zero. In theory. Go ahead, Mook. Oh, the batteries are dead. And their side posts. God damn it, why? Why are they dead? Your lights dim or get brighter or 
darker or anything when I do this? No, Turn the headlights on. Yeah, I cannot get this side to connect on the positive. There we go. Looks like our positive battery terminal on that side was loose and we were only running off potentially one battery this whole time. So we turned the headlights on to see when we had amperage and uh, it was doing nothing until I wiggled this line that comes all the way across from the passenger battery to the driver. So looks like we lost continuity over there and we we're probably just running on one battery for a while. Or at least while it's been sitting. Oh, you know why? It's because this is loose because Angus uh, took it off to do the alternator or something. That or it's loose because this just stripped out. Oh, let's find out. Go ahead and crank it. Alright, we got fuel. We'll tighten that down. And hit the glow plugs and see if this thing lights off. This is actually probably a good example of uh, what people sometimes assume to be a dead battery is just the continuity is enough to turn all the accessories on the car once you hit it with a high amperage load it will not be able to hold that high amperage load and then lose the connection so if you ever see that check all your battery connections and ground and stuff because like six times out of ten it's not actually a good battery all right let's try it not understand what the is going on right here. I have replaced every single component and it is screaming to the high heavens and we've put a thermal camera on it and the only thing that gets hot is those back two pulleys. Nothing else. No bearings, no belts, just those pulleys. It's like Thursday at 5 p.m. and I wanted this video out in like 30 minutes and it's gonna be a big video to edit. And this thing won't stop screaming. I, I don't. I don't get it. Like, is it hot already? It's already. It's already hot. <laughs> All right, we got the FLIR camera out. As you can see, that right there is the water pump pulley. Uh, it is nice and warm. In comparison to the power steering pulley, which is also warm, but nowhere nearly as warm. Thirty-one degrees Celsius. Where this. Pulley in the center is about 53, so somehow even the back pulley is the same temp and there's nothing on it. What the shit? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on, but this is pretty cool. That uh, orange line up top, that is the glow plug wire. The orange glow in the middle is the headers, and then this here is the positive battery cable. These things are pretty neat. It's called a Flitter 1. This is an older model. Uh, Flitter, if you're watching this, I'd love to love to work with you guys because this would be something that is really nice in the shop. But yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on here. It's not the fan. There's no heat in the fan. It's not the power steering pump. It is something to do with this pulley right here. It's just mad at the world. I need to think and pray about this, then we'll be back. Yeah, booger scope. All right, in the name of science, I've removed the alternator belt. We did this earlier in this video and it stopped screaming and we're like, oh, it's the alternator. And we replaced the alternator after replacing the water pump, after replacing like everything else. Like I, I've gone through everything and I can't figure out what this noise is. But either way, let's see if the noise goes away when I take the alternator belt off again. <laughs> So it has something to do with the alternator belt. I just don't know what. All right, I have gone over to my bench and developed the Spinomatic 950. It's a, a pulley off of I don't know what with a bolt from I don't know what shoved into it that just happened to fit really well. We'll see if it works. I'm going to independently test the alternator 
see if our new alternator has a bad bearing or something crazy. I've seen it before, walking out of O'Reilly's with one for Angus's truck. I just was walking out the door and I spun it and it went dink and seized. So we just stopped and turned around and set it back on the counter and grabbed a different one. So it happens. That seems as if to not be a problem. Uh, one thing we do need to test though is that under a load, so I'm going to turn the key on, it's going to sense that it needs to charge and then it'll probably be really hard to turn. There we go, under load. Failed. Yeah, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> you can hear it mechanically engage when it got up to speed. No noise. Another thing could be is a clutch fan, but it seems to be just fine, so I have no idea. Um, we'll just keep spinning stuff till something screams and then punch it in the face. I don't get it. That, that seemed to be just fine. And that's the belt for the alternator. You think it might be the crank pulley making noise, but the crank pulley goes from crank to water pump over to power steering. That's it. And the alternator belt, the one definitive thing that I can change and the noise stops, goes from water pump to alternator. And that's it. That's all it does. <sighs> I need one of those cameras that can see sound. We need Angus or you on like 12 rippets to get in here and look and tell me where it's coming from see the sound waves. I've had three. I'm 25% there. Alright, power steering pump. Seems to be just fine. We all have problems. Stop screaming. I don't understand. All the heat is in that center pulley, which makes sense because that's where all the belts converge and there's going to be a lot of friction there. I've never seen one get that hot that fast, but it could be because it wobbles or it's a GM or who knows. But the outer pulley is the one that stays cool of the three, and if you take that belt off, the noise goes away. I am running out of ideas quickly. Okay, that belt is nice and tight as well, but not too tight, so we can probably rule that out. Let's see what it does. The, the weirdest part to this whole thing is that when we got the car running, it did not make this squealing noise. And then as we drove it around town, because after part one, we just started driving the damn thing. It ran so well. We drove it all around town, and at one point, it started squeaking a little bit under load. And then it started squeaking under, under a little less load. And then it would kind of squeak at idle. And as we changed more and more parts and put more and more new parts on, it got louder and louder and louder until now it's bellowing at idle. <laughs> So if you get a little oil on the belt, it stops screaming until it dries that back off. Uh, I don't think it's actually a bearing because I could put it down on the fan side and it still shuts up. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It, it might just need some belt dressing. Which I don't even know where you can find that anymore. It's not 1983. It's not? 
No, fun fact. <laughs> Alright, I've loosened the belt because screw it. Um, it's now got a little flop in it. See if that makes a difference. I am literally out of ideas. That's normal belt squeak. This thing is falling apart faster than I can fix this car. Like we drove this pile of shit in here and it was fine. And now it is just shitting on us and falling apart faster than I can keep it together. Let's get a car with America's most notoriously bad engine and see if we can put it back on the road. It'll be a great time, I said. I'll have fun, I said. This will be a great car, I said. Nope! Because of the fact that we took that compressor belt off and cut it and threw it out because we thought it was what was squealing was the compressor, if there's not enough tension on the one belt that's on the crank pulley to drive all three accessories. The, the squeaking at idle is down now with that old belt on. Now it's just screaming if I crack the throttle open. So I'm thinking it's because it used to have two belts driving the center pulley so that it had to do half as much work as the one belt driving it, so it's just, it's just not enough belt to keep up. All right, I've gone ahead, taken all the belts off, cleaned all the pulleys, got the brake clean out, made sure to get all the grease and WD-40 out of the belts. So they are back to a dry status. Uh, I put all the new belts back on to include a AC pump belt so that the center pulley, because I can't, I can't really show this to you guys, but this is essentially the crank, the water pump, the AC, the power steering, and the alternator. And the belt pattern goes crank to water to power steering. Just those three. The second belt for the alternator goes water pump to alternator. So in the previous setup, we only had that power steering belt running to the crank. So everything was trying to move ran off of one V belt. Now we have crank, water pump, AC compressor, crank. So now we have two belts driving the central pulley that runs essentially everything. So that should, in theory, help with some of our slippage if it's a load issue, which it may be, because I'm sure this is a huge ass alternator and it's trying to charge two mostly dead batteries. All right, here it goes. No idea if the batteries are charged enough. It's been probably an hour. headlights but I have no accessories inside the car why is it like this why does it hate me this car does not want to come back to life on the road this was supposed to be done literally a week ago yesterday we were supposed to have this car done on like Wednesday or Tuesday last week and we're still working on it and it's still no closer to running we have results that set of wires right there as you can see uh, they Follow that loom. The big loom is the positive battery cable. They all go into the starter area, and then GM pulls their positive power off of the starter instead of, you know, up here where it'd be nice off the solenoid like a Ford. And then they feed that into the car. And there are two power feeds for most vehicles. One for a safety measure. You will always have lights, and you will always have brake lights, even without a key in the ignition. So if your brake lights and headlights work, that means you have power to the car. It may not be power to all of the car, but the car has a ground and enough of a positive contact to power up that high of an amperage system. Your key toggles another input, which is the accessory and ignition and all the main power input comes to the key, well to a relay that's controlled by the key and then out to the vehicle. So if you have headlights, but nothing happens when you turn the key, that means your feed from that starter or from the starter solenoid on the Fords into the vehicle has a problem somewhere. It could be a big ass fuse, could be the main relay that's supposed to lock closed is broken. Something somewhere is wrong. In the case of this car, 
I was taking my power probe and stabbing it into wires to see if there was continuity in the wire as I went, like such, and tracing it down. I went to stab one way down yonder and I heard dink and something must have been loose or some shit. Because sure enough, now we have power to the key. So we can finally see if the belt stops squeaking now. Someday I'll actually make a diagnostic video uh, talking about electrical systems in cars. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> a lot of people probably won't understand it, but I'm gonna try to make it as simple as I possibly can. I just have to develop a method and some examples to portray all that knowledge to you guys to pick up easy if electrical is not your thing. Anywho, let's see if these belts still scream and cover them with belt dressing. Finally complete-ish, I think. I don't know, we'll find out. The biggest difference seemed to apparently be getting that other belt on, which makes no sense, because when the issue first started three weeks ago, right after finishing part one, all three, it was literally just like this, but with old belts, an old water pump, and the old alternator, and the dirty center pulley, still wobbling. So, nothing has changed really like like nothing big changed just now besides i put the one belt that was there when the problem started back on it doesn't like the spark plugs you used <laughs> it doesn't like this <laughs> yeah we used the wrong spark plugs <laughs> all right let's put this thing together and uh wrap everything up i guess it's completely pitch dark out now so we're gonna have to wait until the morning to go drive <sighs> All right, today's the day. Again, for like the fourth time. <laughs> this car should be done. We're gonna try to drive it. I've spent the whole morning editing this video, so I gotta relive all the pain and suffering that we've gone through to get to this point. So it's all really fresh right now. So don't fail me again. That's probably the worst engine I could ever tell that to. Like, that's definitely not gonna start now. <laughs> Ooh. So fancy. Alright. Don't oh, flip me off. It's got ridges for pleasure. Oh my God. There it is. 40 mile an hour. 
normal menial amount of smoke come out the back. It's just old diesel things. It rides even better than before. The steering's way tighter. Uh, still a lot of body roll, but a tiny bit less now that we fixed the bushings and the fact that it had like no sway bar essentially. It's kind of sad that that's all that changes. It's just a little bit, but we're moving right along. We fixed the uh, vacuum line off camera, so the kick down works now on the trans. It's surprisingly quiet and incredibly comfortable. And the hood shakes a lot, but here it is. America's most hated diesel back on the road tormenting more people Right about now it's probably a good time for you to be thinking why the hell did you guys go through all that work? Which was a lot of work for an 81 Buick Century These cars aren't gonna be around forever and if people don't start saving them They're not gonna be around at all and it, it was unique being a diesel and it kind of I, I like that and despite it being what some people may call a very ugly, unreliable, terrible car that's a piece of shit to work on and it really hates me for every fiber of my being, I kind of like it still in the end. Right until it breaks down about a half mile. Thank you guys for joining us on this unnecessary adventure of bringing an 81 Buick Century Dursel back to life and putting it back on the road where it probably doesn't belong. I'm just gonna say it's low on trans fluid. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to the channel here, Junkyard Digs. Uh, leave a like and a comment. Check out some of our other great episodes and videos and whatnot. Uh, leave us a prayer for making it the one mile back to the shop. I'm gonna need it. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys right here next week. Subscribe to all of our friends, Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, The Boss Garage, Vice Grip Garage, Cars and Cameras, Classic Mustangs 429, Dueling the Cool. Uh, Golden Rust and Bust, the whole gang. Peace. Goodbye.